The bells of St. Michael's Church ringing out Thursday night in honor of the nine people killed at the Charleston Church shooting. It was part of BBC's Music Day. Several Charleston area churches sent bell ringers to help with the tolling of the bells. Saturday marks two years since the massacre at Emanuel AME Church, and it's a chilling scene we're never going to forget. Law enforcement racing to Emanuel AME Church in downtown Charleston on June 17th, 2015. We'd later learn that Dylan Roof opened fire during a Wednesday night Bible study, killing nine people. Roof said he wanted to start a race war. Police caught him the next morning and brought him back to Charleston County to face charges. Earlier this year, a judge sentenced Dylan Roof to death. Since then, he's been on death row in Indiana. He's filed appeals, attempting to overturn the sentence and the verdict. Since Roof was sentenced at the federal level, the state came up with a backup plan. They cut a plea deal. If something happens, Roof will serve life in prison in South Carolina. Now, the granddaughter of Reverend Daniel Simmons, who was killed that night, started a nonprofit after the tragedy. News 2's Ashley Osborne is joining us now live in front of the church. And Ashley, Elena Simpson's organization is called Hate Won't Win. Brad, first let me start by saying how much I admire Alana Simmons. I watched her this winter in a courtroom full of adults, most of them twice her age, distinguished lawyers, high-ranking judges, tons of reporters. She just commanded the room. She continues to command an audience with her nonprofit, Hate Won't Win movement. The video that you're watching is from their event last year, A Walk for Unity. This was the weekend of the Charleston Church shooting's first anniversary. And they'll do the Walk for Unity again this Saturday. Alana wants the occasion to happen each year. And on top of the Unity Walk, the Hate Won't Win movement gives financially to families and communities affected by hate crimes, discrimination, and bullying. They also partner with organizations to work on ways to prevent hate crimes. Alana says she appreciates the thoughts and prayers, but she always likes to solicit action as well. If people are really, you know, just kind of convicted by what happened, um, I would hope that that conviction leads to change in their hearts and, um, you know, really just encourage them to get involved in being preventative in hate crimes. And, you know, that could be through the Hate Won't Win movement, that could be on your job, that could be, you know, in your church. It all starts with having those conversations, those really hard conversations just about race relations or religion relations or, you know, just different kind of things, basically the things that divide us. She wants to renew the spirits of the nine victims each year and remind people to stay unified as a community. The Unity Walk will start at 9 a.m. Saturday in downtown Charleston. They'll start at Marion Square and end at the Gilliard Center, where they'll hear from a guest speaker and watch live performances. Live outside Emanuel AME Church, Ashley Osborne, News 2. Charleston Police Chief Greg Mullen, who responded to the Charleston Church shooting, announced this week that he's going to retire in August. Two years ago, after the shooting, he created the Illumination Project. The goal is to strengthen the relationship between officers and citizens. The head of the Charleston Police Fund, which helped bring the project to life, says it will continue. Now the community needs to help fill Chief Mullen's shoes. I think the community needs to continuously support it. I think they need to challenge it and its validity um, and its authenticity. Because I think that that's what's going to drive, you know, its its sustainability. More listening sessions are in the works.